Hey friends, in this video we're going to talk about wiring your cameras. All right, so it's been a little while since we started the pre-wire series videos where we're giving you tips on how to pre-wire everything in your home. Uh, there were two videos actually that we finished already, but I was in a bad mood or something and they're not very good. So I couldn't do that to you. So we're redoing the video on cameras for you. So this video is all about wiring your cameras. Keeping it really simple, there are two types of cameras that you might wire up in your home. One's an analog camera and the other is an IP or a network-based camera. We do have some of the other outliers like the wireless cameras, video doorbells. We're gonna keep the focus here obviously on the cameras that need a wire and I'll touch base on the video doorbell cameras at the very end of the video. So the first camera we're going to talk about is an analog camera. And when we're running wires to the analog camera, we're going to use a coax cable. And this is a different coax than what you would use for your TVs. It's actually called an RG59. And then we also need a power wire. So we're going to use an 18-2. The video is going to go over the coax and the power is going to be sent over the 18-2. Kind of a cool tip for your analog cameras, especially when you go somewhere like Costco or Fry's and you buy one of those DVR kits with a bunch of cameras in it. They're gonna give you something called Siamese Coax. And all it is is a bundled cable that has both the RG59 and the 18-2 inside of one cable. So we're gonna call it Siamese Coax, but it's the same thing. It's an RG59 and an 18-2. Next up, we have your IP or network cameras. I guess it's not IP and network, it's just IP or network, same thing. But in any event, what we're gonna run for IP network cameras is a Cat5 or a Cat6. Cool thing about your network cameras is it's sending both power and video over the same Cat5 or Cat6. They call it power over ethernet, and then of course it's gonna get the video over the same Cat6 cable as well. If you really wanted to geek out, you could even use fiber, but to keep it simple, we're gonna tell you to run one Cat5 or one Cat6 out to each camera location. Now here's kind of a cool tip for you on wiring up for your cameras. I've been in installations before where the dealers ran three wires. They ran the RG59, the 18.2, and the Cat5, and maybe even some spares, so that the client has the options to go either analog or IP when they get to the other side. Maybe the client's not sure yet what type of camera they want, and sort of future-proofing the camera location. But the reality is that all you need to run is a single Cat5 or a Cat6, and regardless of what type of camera you purchase, an analog or an IP camera, you'll be able to use that Cat5 or that Cat6 wire. If you're not sure yet if you wanna do analog cameras or network-based cameras, just run a Cat5 or a Cat6. And when you get to the other side, if you do an analog camera, there's an end you put on that Cat5 or that Cat6. It's gonna convert the Cat5 or the Cat6 so that it's able to send both power and video to an analog camera. If you're using it on a network camera, you're just gonna terminate it for the network camera. So that's a cool tip. When we we wire up homes, we rarely run more than one wire per camera, unless it's the kind of thing where the client just wants to have some redundancy. Maybe they're worried that a cable might get damaged during construction, so we double up our wires at each camera location, but otherwise we just run one Cat5 or Cat6 to each camera location in the home. Now with your camera systems, you may have web-based cameras where nothing's recording, it's just all going out into the cloud, but traditionally when you're wiring up cameras in your home, you're going to use a DVR or an MVR that's going to record these cameras 24-7. All these wires are going to home run from that MVR or DVR that's recording in cameras 24 7. Typically we place the MVR in the media rack. It doesn't have to go in the media rack but if you're doing a media rack that's the easiest place to stash your MVR. If you don't have a media rack or if you just for whatever reason want to keep it in a separate location maybe hidden or out of sight. A couple of things you want to remember it's best if the MVR or DVR has a network cable so you can hardwire it into the network and you need to have some means of putting it on a monitor. Now if you're just going to place a monitor on top of the MVR no big deal but if you want to display the MVR or your DVR on the TV you've got to plan on pulling HDMI from the MVR location out to the TV or at least running conduit from the MVR location out to the TV so that you can run HDMI from the MVR out to the TV at a later time. Again, we prefer putting the MVR and the DVR in the media rack. When you do that, you don't have to worry about hardwiring it into the network or conduit for the TV because you're gonna have all of those right there at the rack. So it's very easy to tie the MVR into the whole system, the network, and display it out to the TVs in the home. And then lastly, we've got our video doorbells. You got products like ring.com and Skybell. Two ends got their Helios product. Um, we've got Doorbird. I'm sure we're gonna see some others hit the market. Here's a simple standard we use when we're gonna wire up a home and we're not sure what video doorbell we're gonna be using. First and foremost, you want your electricians to wire up the doorbell like any other doorbell they're gonna run. So they're still gonna put the chime in, they're still gonna put the transformer in for the doorbell, they're gonna wire it up like there's no video doorbell going in at all. And then you wanna run a Cat5 or a Cat6 and one 22-4 wire to that same location. Now you may not use both of those wires, but that's what we run standard and that keeps our options open depending on the type of doorbell that we're gonna install later. Helpful tip is you wanna drill about a one inch hole to pull those wires through. You can't use a low voltage mud ring because most of your doorbells won't cover that mud ring. And some of those doorbells, for example, like the doorbird, there's a lot of connections that we've gotta shove back into the wall of the home. So make sure you leave yourself a lot of room that you can shove all those wires back in 
into. It's a really helpful tip. It'll save you a lot of headache on the other side when it comes time to install your doorbell. So that's it for cameras and what we wire up on cameras. Hopefully you're seeing real fast a trend. As a general rule, you're gonna run one Cat5 or one Cat6 to all the camera locations outside and inside your home. And then on the doorbell, you're gonna run a Cat5 or a Cat6 plus a 22-4 wire. Now real fast, a couple of tips on camera placement. A lot of times we go and we design a system for clients and they get really excited about placing their cameras as high up in the air as they can possibly get them. It's a real pain. You wanna place the cameras near the first level so it's easy for you to access those cameras from a ladder that you have on site. Now we don't want them so low that a burglar can just walk up to the side of your house, reach up and grab the cameras and move them. But we want them low enough that you can climb up on a 10 foot ladder and adjust the camera locations, clean the lens, easily service those cameras. And then when we're finishing these runs, so we get the camera wires pulled to the location we want, all we do is place a low voltage mud ring at that location. And typically we're gonna place it in the soffit and the soffit guys know to just trim around that low voltage ring and then we can blank plate it or place the camera there later. The next thing with cameras is almost inevitably when clients move into their homes and they fire up their camera system for the first time, they start to notice all the blind spots that they have with their camera system. They're really excited about the coverage that they're getting, but now they realize how much they wish they had coverage in all the other areas where they didn't wire for cameras. So when we wire up a home for cameras, at a minimum, we place two cameras at every corner of the house. We have one camera that's facing the front door. Even if you have a video doorbell, it can't see packages from UPS or Amazon that you might have there on your front porch. So we put a camera that's looking at the front door. Normally, if you double up your cameras on every corner of the house and you put those cameras on the front porch, you're gonna cover what you need to cover. But the one other area to pay attention to are any entry points that might still not be covered. Maybe a man door on the garage, maybe you have a covered deck with an extra door or some stairs coming up to the deck on your master bedroom. And it's nice to have cameras at all those entry points so it's very difficult for somebody to get in without being on camera. We don't see a lot of indoor cameras, but we do see indoor cameras on key doors. Like if you wanna see when the kids come home from school, movie theaters, we see cameras in movie theaters a lot. Parents just wanna check up on the teenagers when they're in watching a movie. There's a lot of different applications. Don't be afraid to put cameras on the inside of your home. Okay, that's it on cameras. If you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you. And as always, we'd love it if you'd like, subscribe, and share this with your friends. Oh,